Okay, so we'll open the meeting at 7 o'clock. Call to order. We don't do that here. Oh, well, we never mind. That. No, it's some of the meetings called orders where they take attendance. We have a, a roll call. So we'll go to the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we'll do roll call. Here. 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 Kirksey. Here. Perkins. Here. McKinney. Collis. Here. Motion to excuse uh, Mike McKinney. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Mike and his family are in New Mexico as Sarah's father is not doing well. So that's why he's not with us tonight. Um, approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. Second. Second. Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. Turpenik's motion with uh, Josh Murphy. Yeah. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Approval of the minutes for December 9th, 2021. Are there any additions or deletions? Sure. None appearing, then the chair would entertain a motion. I move to accept a minute. Second. Yes, I got your job. Motion by Turpening, okay. second by DeSessa. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Statement of purpose. I will say this for those viewers that may be watching this from home. The mission, of the, the mission of the Holly Historic District Commission is to safeguard the heritage of the village of Holly by preserving the historic districts in the village that reflect elements of the village's history, architecture, archaeology, engineering, or culture. The goal of the Commission's work is to stabilize and to improve property values in the historic district and the surrounding areas, foster civic beauty, strengthen the local economy, and to promote the use of the historic districts for the education, pleasure, and welfare of the citizens of Holly. We don't have any presentations tonight. We don't have anybody in our audience for public comment. Um, we will go to Old Business, which is the design guidelines for the historic district. At our last meeting, you were given quite a sizable packet to uh, look over. And tonight, we were going to talk about ideas or questions you may have or thoughts you may have in, as far as moving forward. Don't everybody jump up at once. <laughs> So Sorry. is the goal to do a much reduced? Yes. So you weren't here at the last meeting. Right. These, we went online and tried to see what was out there, and we thought this was the most comprehensive okay. of what we saw, excluding Boston. Boston is the home of the founding of this country, sure. and they're really, you know, Stringent. right down to materials and, and everything. So, Fair enough. Um, but this one was quite detailed had some of the things we've talked about in the past, like solar and so forth. So we brought that to the table and said, where are the parts we like? What do we think fits for Holly? If you see the one that we got tonight. Um, and George, I just gave it to you, sir. I only it. Yeah, I know. I I'm going to explain to everybody. I'll see that you get copies of this to add to what you have. This is for the city of Linden. This is 34 pages. I will tell you, I was looking at the index, and for example, they have in the table of contents, page eight, or no, page six are the Secretary of the Interior Standards. Now, obviously on one page, they don't have that whole thing because you all have the booklet on the Secretary of the Interior. What they have are the 10 issues from the Secretary of the Interior Standards within their um, guidelines packet. So obviously there are more, but this is like you said, a much more condensed version. So we'll have that there. But that was a beginning for everybody to look at, to talk about a concept moving forward. One of the things that we did say at that meeting for your benefit was, and, and Ron Campbell was here then, the historic district in Holly was, was formed later than many historic districts. We have many homes in, this, in the village that are of historical nature. And in the 60s and 70s, they got covered with steel siding. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the most recent example is the McCanny home. But if you take the McCanny home, if you take the uh, Corte home, which is on the corner of Center, College Street Center, correct? Center's on the back yes. of your building? Yes. If you take the Corte home, which is kind of kitty corner from me, um, that house was covered in white steel siding just like McCanny's. If you drive by that house today and you drive by the McCanny house, those are two houses that because of the historic district, when they remodeled them, we gained all the architectural acriments that were on that house. We, deal, we gained all of the fish scale and so forth on the McCanny house. Mm -hmm. So we actually brought those houses back sure. from what happened to them in the 50s and 60s with the steel siding. The McCanny's house is a great example because you had the bay windows that were boxed off those are there. All of the architectural accoutrements that are up along the, the house are back. As you drive by that house, you'll see those are in a, a green, I call it a green foam, you're the decorator, but sea foam green, sure. kind of a color up there. Um, if you drive by the Corte house, you will see that the windows, we gained, the, they had the, um, they had peeled the window trim off when they put the steel siding on, but it left the diagram so in their house, they did that one six to eight years ago when they took the steel siding off. If you look at that house up on the point, we got the leaded glass exposed again on the windows. They were able to recreate the window trim so that you see the unusual trim that's on that window. Across the front porch, you'll notice that the um, individual in between the pillars, there's like an angled arch on each one. The steel siding just had it square, and it was all gone. So there is a value in, in the district from the standpoint of, no, it didn't go back to 100% historically accurate. Sure. Because we did allow vinyl siding to cover the wood siding, but we went back to 4-inch vinyl, which is more true to the house, than the 8-inch steel. And in the case of the McCanny home, one of the things we learned when that was off, they still had the original wood siding on the back section of the house. It was nailed straight to the studs. There was no underlayment. When the steel siding came off, it blew pictures off the wall in their, <laughs> in their dining room because the air came right through. So um, there is, we are not necessarily as stringent as, say, Boston or somebody like that is with our historic homes, but our guidelines do help us bring the houses back. There's a house on College Street that we just had past summer. They were going to build a porch in it, in a, on the front. And because of the historical society, they stopped, they backed up, and the porch they put on there is more conducive to what a Greek Revival home would have had mm -hmm. as, a porch, as opposed to just a shed roof porch, which is what they were originally going to be put on there. So there are some definite significant values in our district. We need to set up guidelines that show some of our leniency in the areas where, where it works and, and at the same time protects those things that we're looking to save. Does Linden's include the energy, the solar energy solution? Um, I'm just curious. I don't believe they do. It does okay. not. I, no, that's I, one of the things I had highlighted. I, I was like, I don't oh my gosh, did, how do we no. address that? Yeah, but it was modified before, I think, solar really became. Yeah. We, we had a case here, I'm not sure if you were on the commission when it came to us, a house that on Maple Street that wanted to put solar. And no, that was before her. Yeah. Yeah. Really. So, but the company came out, sold them solar. We can do these wonderful things, and they got here and went, yeah, not so fast, because there are some guidelines. There is a house on Maple Street with solar, isn't there? It's not registered. Okay. Yeah, but the house that came, the problem was the company, and and they weren't even they weren't even aware of this. The company was going, oh yeah, we're going to put it here, here, here. Well, the problem is the sun is behind their house, not in front of their house. They would have actually had solar panels on the side of the house that only got morning sun, and it wouldn't have gotten the morning sun because they had trees in the way. Well, those were some of the things we were able to look at. And then as we looked at, in their particular case, putting them on the back of the house, they don't have a roof on the back of the house that faces toward the sun. So fortunately for them, we saved them a whole lot of money. But at the same time, there are guidelines within that packet from Oregon that show you what the um, parameters would be for solar, and there is an allowance for solar in there, but it's done in such a way that you don't lose the um, historic appeal. The ho historic appeal of the house on the front. So um, there are some things. Did anybody else have anything? 
Yeah, I do. I think the I like the Linden one. I think it's a lot simpler. Well, the mic's very hot. Today. Yeah, it's close. Uh, <laughs> so, but and the solar is missing. But to me, it's like if we could do like part of the Linden with adding the solar would be a lot simpler and the less. Well, and that was the the intention was to pull things from that to put together exactly. our own. Sure. Well, we don't have to invent the wheel. At right. the same time, we can do some copy and paste and what fits for Holly and put it together. That's why we... There, there was a few things in here about fencing. Yeah, I was going to say fencing, that too. really, I was like, how... Yeah. There's so many homes that already have it, and if we followed these guidelines, they'd have to pull it. Right. Right. Well, they can't pull it if it's already there. there. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So the neighbor, the new neighbor who comes in that wants it also is going to say, well, Bill, Bob, and why can't I have it? Yeah. So... That, I think that would be a big stickler from this packet here. Well, but that, that's from the like Oregon said, packet. I, like I said, there, were, there were, that was the whole idea was to look at it and say, I'm not so I maybe I don't like this, but I really like this piece. I like some of that piece. I think part of what I liked about that plan was the amount of pictures it had because pictures are a thousand words kind mm -hmm. of thing, and and that was some good value because as we go forward, one of the things that that you have to do with the historic district and. I've been on this commission now for almost 10 years, and I've been in this chair for maybe five of that time, is the historic district often gets a very negative um, viewpoint because think, people think it's this ultimate control, and, and, and we really don't control that many things. We pretty much help to protect the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that our job is is we need to educate people on the value of having a historic district in your town. And we've got the Michigan Historic Preservation Network conference coming in May, and that's part of the things that you learn at that conference, and it gives us a wonderful opportunity to feature that for our community. So, um, George, a couple of questions. Um, sure. I'm, I'm a little confused. I mean, I understand totally this document and the need for it, but uh, is this also going to serve, this committee has talked about the need also mm -hmm. Uh, for to get information out to new homeowners, right, who are in the historic district, right, and so this back up your microphone, right. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, is this document supposed to serve that purpose as well, or is this not necessarily the same thing? No, th this will be part of when when a homeowner comes into the office to do work. This will be the packet that they'll be handed. To help guide them through this process because as you know we've had some people that knew nothing about it until they show up here yeah. and and that's quite okay. honestly that's kind of backwards right and well didn't for, we talk about the, it the last missed, meeting missed. giving them a handbook a, or a brochure yeah, a handbook or a brochure yeah. Just well giving them an overview and that way they're not going <gasps> well so there's two things and that 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 brochure hand or handbook or mm -hmm. that you're talking about that's to let them know that they're here Right. This is something they would get when they oh, actually. Oh yeah. No, I'm just saying. There's when they actually come in and said, "I want to do something to my house," that's the time they get this. Because okay. we talked about that too, yeah. and we don't necessarily give one of these sets of guidelines to every home. No. Because of the expense, and if they're not doing anything, it really doesn't matter. And we know it's going to get put in a drawer and disappear. I'm moving here from Clawson, and I meet with my realtor, and they give me a handbook, letting me know. It's right there. Hey, you're in the historical district. Here's some simple. They would uh, probably. They would know that they need to. Just to clarify, that. we have been working. Uh, I'll turn this to Josh in a moment. Right now, realtors have no obligation to do that. We are working um, in in an effort to make that happen on a state level. In the meantime, the brochure we're talking about, they would receive once they've bought the home because we can't do anything. Then they find out. Well, but we can't do any, <laughs> unfortunately, right now, but we're That's, working I know, I understand. Unfortunately, right now, there is no law that obligates real estate people to tell them that. However, when they come into the office to file the papers that says, I just bought this house and I'm now, now the new owner, that's when they would get the material. So at least they're not out there with their new house, start remodeling, and, and the way it happens now, Jeremy pulls up the driveway and says, you can't do that, stop. That's what we're trying to fix. That's what we're trying to. Avoid. When when will we have the updated district? Because I know there was talk of expansion. That well, was my other question. How does that affect this document? Does this have to wait for that update? No, 
Okay. No, this guideline would pertain to one house or all homes. So this right. can be done anytime. It comes with the blanket. The, right. the expansion and the redistricting, part of that is there are steps that have to go through. The council had to adopt it, then right. it has to go back. Then the homework has to be done to go to the pages. And unfortunately, the way the law is written is this commission can't do that. Therefore, volunteers have to. That's why Nicole Edwards is right. heading that out. Right. And she's been kind of a one-man show because there aren't a lot of people offering to help her go through that process. But um, as that gets done. Uh, Mr. Collis, I would say too that we are in the midst of revamping our village website. And of course, all these guidelines will be available on its own tab. So on the home page, you would say Historic District Commission. And then you'd hit that tab and come down. And then the application, the guidelines, contact information of well, liaisons and the commissioner's information would also be all on that. If I could make a suggestion, when we do that new website, it might be nice on that opening page. It's it's a, do you live in the historic district? Sure, and those are things that we could add. W wor wording of that nature, makes somebody go. Me want to go and look at it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't know. Do I? Kind of thing. Absolutely. You know, as well, opposed that, to just saying historic district. Do you live in the historic district? There's all kinds of because there's really nothing do. on the website right now. No, there's you. nothing. Mr. Nothing. Zero. Right. Right. And not even this meeting. You can't find the dates for the meeting so um, I have been tasked with uh, tri Nick Klemp and I uh, working with the RRC program we are working on a new development uh, we are meeting we've already made a couple phone calls we got some meetings set up um, so yeah. I would hope by the end of this this time next year we have a brand new website up and running um, but I wouldn't anticipate any time before that everything takes just forever, forever. Yeah, yeah Nick's a good man right right now everything's on the chamber website that's what There's a chamber website and the CDA website. Both are yeah for dates, calendar dates. That's what I use. That's what comes know, to my but phone. There's nothing yeah. like minutes or anything. There's nothing. Oh, none of that. On the village alley yeah. on the historic district commission. Oh. We might have more than zero people. There's zero <laughs> people on. I'm watching. I'm watching it right now. There's zero people. Well, on. I, I will say in their defense, though. I mean, uh, if you sign up for their the village's email. They yes. will send you that with, and they do have the dates in there. They do. So, I just got that. Not everybody signed up for that. True. No. But that's the, isn't that Gov, something Gov? Yeah, as soon as you log into the village website for the first time, second time, third time, it will prompt you to sign up to subscribe to the, new, the newsletter, and then you will get those alerts. But that's still someone. Has to go there. Right. Yeah, has, has to, to go do to all through. Yep. Not everyone wants to do all those stuff. So. Right. Yep, you're not catching And anything. other meetings, I saw it tonight. I, other meetings are listed if they're canceled or changed. I don't know why it's not <coughs> listed. I was not aware of that, so I will check but, into that. And that, actually, yeah, the village website is blank. Mine went, mine went entirely blank, and that's what I live off of. I know the newsletter that went out just recently, uh, it was listed. It was. Yeah. Oh, on the, on the newsletters, yeah. yeah. Well, the reason I asked the question about the expansion, if it was to include homes of people that don't wish to be part of it, how, how do we negotiate that, or how do we it, it, navigate that? I mean, if you've lived in a home for 40 years, and all of a sudden somebody comes to you and says, hey, you're in historic it's, district. It's not how that, it's... That's it, what I'm asking. I don't understand it the doesn't, parameters. It doesn't work that way. It's not a volunteer in or a volunteer out. That is something to do with the local government makes the decision that this is the historic district that we're out to protect. And we can't and go back, but we can uh, affect things moving forward. I yeah, moving forward. Way. Correct. Yeah, yeah if, so that's basically... If, if they get put in a historic yeah. district today, nothing changes from what they have. It only affects future remodeling, future yeah. building, okay. future projects on the house. It reflects nothing of what's currently there. You can't make them take something out. But that's where that benefit comes in, because like with the Corti home, now, the court, you know, they were just had a guy come out and he was going to strip this off and put it on. When they got in front of us, okay, we said, here's the concerns. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're looking for. When they stripped it off, we found it. They were very willing to go along with it. In fact, they're very happy with their home because it, it made it look so much more, so much better. And, and that's part of what historic districts do is they actually increase the value of the home. So um, the state legislature in the Historic District Act and on the federal level set it up so that here's the guidelines if the homework's done and the justification for the historic district is made and the village council approves it it becomes a historic district it's a done done deal okay now there could be homes 
within that district that fall under the category of um, not contributing. Right. They, not in contributing home. Perhaps you have, well, you have the example on Maple Street. From my house down to McCanny's, they are old, old homes, but there's a red brick ranch in the middle. That house burned. Somebody came in and rebuilt a house. That is a non-contributing home. So if he were to go to do something to his house, he doesn't have to apply. There's a house on College Street right behind the, the Downing house, Dick Roselle's house, mm -hmm. Dick and Dawn Roselle. That house looks to be old, but if you look close, the foundation is new. That burned in the 70s, it's and they rebuilt something to look like it. But it's not contributing because it isn't historical. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is it will become historical when it's 50 years old, but right. then it won't be historical back to the turn of the century. It'll be historical to what was built in the 70s, and therefore could still be considered not contributing to that area because that area is the older homes. So just okay. to give you well, an idea. To me, it's like the auto, you know, when a, a car gets a certain age, it, automatically you can apply for a historic plate. plate. If I see one on a paster, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> 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 All right, but so it's kind of like that with the homes, too, is that when you get to a certain date, then your home is becoming is now part of the historic, not this district, but it's a historic home, yeah, and that's 50 years. years old, yeah, so yeah, there are. There's a great example. It, it isn't in a historic district at this point, and I think that's a great loss. The city of Flushing has a subdivision of there that is classically mid-century modern homes, and when you drive down the street, you know it instantly. And the sad part is, there's about three homes that have remodeled and stolen that mid-century from the house and just kind of boxed them and blocked them. And right now, because the majority of the homes are mid-century modern, those three houses that have done the, the remodel, if you will, stick out like sore thumbs. They don't belong there. But it is a real good example of mid-century modern with the lines and the sloping and the, the low roof and the, the cut across. So it... Um, but you do find that the mid-century modern, of course, is from the 1950s, 1960s. But there's some great houses up there, a as well as they have turn-of-the-century stuff too. So, did anybody else have any input from that? Uh, just a couple of comments. I'm uh, excited by this project, and it, but it seems overdue, and I'm just hoping that. And I know a lot of stuff going on, and uh, but. Hoping we can get this thing done as soon as possible, sometime this calendar year. You Actually, the intent is to have this ready and printed by the May conference. By the conference, that'd be super. So t today's meeting was to find out your input. What I was going to say is, as you look at those plans, if there are a couple of pages that are the highlights that you like this, <coughs> um, if you would, do you want to take the emails or do you want me to take them? I would prefer if we could keep them at the administrative level. Okay, so we send them to Lisa then? Lisa or myself, preferably. Yeah. Or both. Okay. Okay, so let's send them there so that we, um, we're going to need, once you get them, you're going to need to compile them and give them to Mike Mechanic because he's got all the, the main parts of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't a spot on here that says turn off your cell phone. <laughs> so are it you should be like first line. Are you going to email the Linden guidelines to yeah. us? Yes. <coughs> yep. I'd be curious to see yeah, I'd like to see them. <coughs> yeah, They're also available on the Wind Linden website. Linden site. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Didn't you uh, our email them, Jeremy? I might have. Yeah, you did. Okay, thank I you. I think Jeremy something. emailed them. Oh. December. Because right? I have a December, yes. Yeah, I thought I did. I was out for Because I, I have them right here. Yeah. Pull them okay. So, so look at those. If there's something that, uh, you know, that you think this should be included, okay. um, we know that the solar is something we want to. Um, take a part of that, and if you see that other stuff, then um, when Mike gets back, uh, we'll go over that, and I can't promise you we'll have it by the February meeting because I don't know the status of his father-in-law, um, but hopefully, at least, if nothing else, by the March meeting, we will have it and put something a little more concrete together that we can um, approve in March, which would actually have it ready then by, be great. by April. So, I guess I should... Uh, 
I'm sure that we're on the same page, George. Are we actually talking about technically two documents, one the larger and all-encompassing one that Mike McCanny brought the draft for, but then also a short one that, I think you already mentioned this, that would be handed to people initially. It just was a, maybe a brochure type thing. So it's actually two documents, maybe? Or maybe an FAQ. Yeah, there you go. That's, that was one. Okay. okay. Frequently asked questions. Yeah, that we, we, that's, that's that one we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was over. I thought you said N F N E F Q, and I'm like, what in an F? There are way too many the acronyms out there. Yeah, it's the I'm mask. sorry. That's okay. It's okay. Not your fault. Did, but between the mask and my age, it just was too fast and went right over <laughs> my head. So. Yeah, cool. So, so it's going to be one document, and our intent is to not have the large document that Oregon had mm -hmm. to to reduce that closer to what this is. Yeah, okay. And then we'll have, like he said, the brochure part that they're handed when they move into the house. Well, my here's my two cents worth is that I like the the layout of the Linden one and the smallness of it and the topics, the table of contents. That's that's my thing, yeah. But. So to me, like uh, to start, to have that as a table of contents with a statement of purpose on top would be a good outline. Okay. To make make sure that you go through the Linden um, guidelines, yeah. paragraph by paragraph. Yeah. And, and yeah. make sure there isn't something that you all of a sudden go, wait a minute. And, and do that because sometimes it gets real easy to go yeah this is small let's do that yeah but, but then just add the solar you know well <clears throat> my notes on this one was you know group the table of contents uh, we have look I think it's pages right now I know we're going to make it smaller but I, I like I know what he's saying about the Linden one it's short and sweet to the point and right. then you get to it and then you can dive deeper well right. and, and like the Linden one for example I ain't that already Secretary of Interior Standards is on page six. We all know that the Secretary of Standards is thicker. Mm -hmm. That just, if, right. if within that page six it says for full click on this standards, uh, yeah, go to the website kind you of You can thing. download it or that whatever. That way it keeps this smaller, and then if they're working specifically on something, they can go to the bigger portion. And we usually always, lately, I, I, I took this board over in, I believe, June of last year or so. I wasn't here in January, but we do pre-construction meetings. So when the applicant comes in, we talk about the guidelines, uh, recommendations, so that when it comes in front of this commission, this board, ready, it's ready for your approval or your denial. It's not ready. And, for and that's something to... new that happened when Jeremy came in because prior to that, we got people in front of us that that there were a couple of times where I had to say this house is non-conforming and doesn't even need to be here, and we actually had to refund them the money, and we had the meeting yeah, for nothing. Yeah. Right. So we've come a long way in getting it into a better... Still got a long ways to go, but we're getting that yeah. progress. Yeah, you're doing good, Jeremy. Okay. Yeah. okay. Absolutely. Anything else on that topic? Did I miss in the giant, the, the large <laughs> guideline? Not giant, sorry. No, go ahead, giant. It's the many-page guidelines for... Um, Boise, am I missing the paint colors? Because I immediately see that on Linden where it says relationship that's, of colors. That's one of the notes I have is do we want to do a color palette? We never have. Okay. A lot of towns do, and actually Cheryl Williams has a historic district color palette. Who? And it, well, Cheryl Williams. Sherwin Williams. So does Benjamin Moore. Yeah, Benjamin, they all do. They all do. So we do have uh, almost 99% certain in our central business or yeah, our CBD district, which is, which is the downtown district, it is recommended to use earth tone colors. And that's almost verbatim of what the ordinance calls for. Um, so that's something that you may want to look at as well so that the two kind of mesh together. Yeah. Look, at, look at that within the Linden one. If you have an opinion, put that in the email form, send it to them, so when Mike gets it and he and I sit there, we can compile it all together? I mean, I think you can keep it broad. Let's say relationship of colors and talk about using a historic palette color. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I, and I mean, like or, most ordinances and laws and everything, is just to, just to prove. 1889. They're just to protect us from the extremes. We don't sure. want a bright pink house, you know. Hey, my house was pink at one point. 
<laughs> yeah. Look at the house on Maple Street. Their yeah. turret is pink. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying. I have pink tile in my porch that you I know what I'm from saying. 1903. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. Pink is, you know. Okay, bright green. I, okay. I don't know. You don't <laughs> got it. I'm just joking. But I do have pink you, in the you house. Might, <laughs> yeah, and you're wearing well, a pink hat. But no, Kari, right. Kari Mayton had been here, but for those of us that have been here 10 years or more, we all remember the building on Saginaw and Elm back when it was known as the Ketchup and Mustard Building. It was red and yellow, and it was bright Yellow. And they paid me to paint it that color. Oh, uh, so it's your fault. I painted it that color. Nope. <laughs> is that the but old uh, my, tattoo parlor? My point is... The old what building? Is that tattoo. the tattoo parlor? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, that was red and yellow? It so was, we have a new business going in there now. People referred to that as the ketchup right. and mustard building, did they not? They did. And it was... How yellow was it? It was, oh, it was yellow! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was screaming. And I tried to talk them out of it, but they that's what they wanted, so... Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. The, the, the color thing would just be to protect us from those extremes. Not, sure. Not to say, okay, you have to paint it this color, I think it this also shade. Says fluorescent colors would be excluded. Yeah, I would right. imagine. Yeah. That would <laughs> so, 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 yeah. So what that's business is going in there? Uh, it's called Vintage Chicks. Okay. Uh, I believe it's like a consignment shop. Oh, yeah. okay. Which, which, interesting enough, is what it was before it was the tattoo tattoo shop. Tattoo shop, yeah. <laughs> What was it back when you painted it yellow and red? It was a church. Ah. It was a church. Really? 40 years. Wow. Oh, wow. Yep. So, okay. Anything else on the guidelines? That's all I had. Going once, twice, sold. <laughs> Election of officers, we need a chair and a vice chair. And a secretary, please. And who's our secretary now? Me. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? What do you do, Mr. Secretary? Well, Comes to the meetings. I read everything. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have a secretary any time and sign the minutes at the end of the meeting. If right. you want. Yep. So we have a secretary by virtue of charter. I believe that's correct. That's I, correct. I'm just okay. following what. No, that's fine. So I, just, I, I answered your text, and I wound up being secretary. So uh, that's <laughs> how that works. That was your fault, huh? I yeah, <laughs> you're bad. Does anybody have a copy of the bylaw? I'm struggling to find the most recent copy I, of the HDC bylaw. Did you give me a in that binder? Would they be in there? That would have been maybe Debbie. I would have. I a swear you gave it to me. I have a copy, and Mike would have, Mike would have one in his notebook. I'm sure he has one. If anybody yeah. has one, Mike has one. So we yeah. can. Yeah. If, if you guys don't have, we can give one to you. I would like to. Okay. Most updated one you guys are working off of. Okay. There's not one of those shelves over there. So we need to deal with election of officers. We need nominations. Don't everybody speak. Um, so George, Mike, and Tim. <laughs> Done. That's awesome. Perfect. I'm with you, Josh. I'll second that motion. Done. So keeping the same positions. Yes, yeah, same positions. Make the motion. Uh, George Cullis is the... President Mike, chair. Chair. Mike chair. Is, or I'm chair. sorry, the chair. Mike is the um, co-chair, co co -chair, and Tim is the secretary. Apparently, outstanding. And Actually, I think good. I think Mike is the vice chair. Vice chair. Yeah, vice chair. Makes sense. Roll call. It's working. Tim's like rascals. Murphy made the motion. Was it um, Perkins? Perkins. Perkins that did the second. Are there any other nominations? George. Okay. Mike. And not, not appearing. <laughs> okay. Now we'll go to roll call. I'm just trying to go through the steps. Roll call. Sessa? Yes. McKinney. Perkins? Yes. Cruxy? Yes. Turpany? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 No. Yeah. <laughs> it's happened to me before. <laughs> Actually, when she calls, me, when, whenever they call the absent person, I'm always waiting for somebody to go. Yes. I know, I do, that, I do that too. <laughs> Which would really mess with you. <laughs> okay, motion carries 6 nothing. Uh, commission staff and comments will start down here with Mr. Perkins. Hope everybody had good holidays. That's all I have. I'm good. I am good. Actually, my comments I had listed. We wound up talking about the website. So, okay. Uh, did you want to talk briefly about the 
information that I provided to your commissioners this evening uh, due to your request. What about the for uh, Governor Whitmer and the three new? Uh, oh. Oh, this. Oh, this. You'll see in front of you, Mr. Turpening reached out to uh, Mrs. Bigger and I uh, yeah. and requested that this information be provided to you uh, just for information, strictly. Right. Well, I, it's kind of, it is self-explanatory. Well, so when I looked at it, I thought it was pretty cool, and my second breath said, we have enough on the plate right now. Let's wait until we get this stuff done before we jump into more. Well, this was just really just told us that there's three new communities in the state of Michigan that are now on the National Historic mm -hmm. uh, Registry. And uh, one of them I thought that was extremely cool is uh, uh, their downtown district, which encompasses 135 buildings. Uh, 100 of those are considered historic. So uh, I'm actually kind of curious to go to that community to see the 100 downtown historic That'd buildings. That would be cool. Which uh, one was that? Wayland. Uh, yeah, Wayland. So yeah, cool. I thought that was of interest, so I appreciate Mr. DeSessi providing that because I wouldn't have seen that. And uh, thank you. Maybe planning a family trip there this summer. I think you forwarded it to us too, didn't you? Where, where, I'm not reading this. Yeah. Where is Wayland? Yeah, I was about to ask that. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a question while. Well, you said you were planning a trip. I figured you knew where it was. Yeah, I just <laughs> went through it. So. Oh, while okay. you're looking that up, I have a really quick question. Do we know what is still needed paperwork wise for the CLG status? Um, I need to that is somewhere between Nicole and Jerry Walker. Okay. There Just are curious. Some there are some documents from the village level that have to be completed. I think one of them just went before the village council and got completed. Oh, okay. good. And it's kind of some technical stuff. So you'd have to either ask, if you ask Nicole, obviously she would know, or Jerry would know because she's okay. waiting for him to, to get them. Just curious if we were close. Um, yeah, actually, she's oh, ready to like submit. Still by South Haven, southeast part of the state over there. Oh, Way oh Wayland is, is cool. over by Holland, southwest. Yeah, Wayland is over south of Grand Rapids. Yeah, yep. So I'm gonna okay. be all weekend, Grand Rapids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was on commission comments. I had gotten to Tim when Jeremy jumped in, so let me get to Josh next. I got not. Oh, the uh, the. Uh, we we're talking about real estate. real estate stuff. Uh, before COVID, I was in talks with GMAR, the Greater Metropolitan Association of Realtors, um, about putting us on when you when you list your home. Just it's 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 to me it's not unlike a um, association. So when it's an association, you have to, have to check that box. Then there's the association paperwork that the buyer has to see, can see and go over before they buy the house. Um, so I was talking with people before COVID about that, and then COVID hit, and I couldn't get hold of anybody anymore, as we all know, and it's been so a pain. You're, you're gonna start that up again? Yes, yeah, so I already, I made two phone calls, and I still haven't heard back, so I'm gonna make another one to someone I actually know and see if I can get further, so. Okay. That's where we're at with that. Okay, now, now understand. And actually, comments. I wanna, I wanna um, when I finally do get a hold of them, I'm calling you immediately and see if we can get on a commerce call, like right down sure, the second. Sure, that Yeah. Um, Lisa, did you have any comments or questions or? Things you need that would make your job easier? No, Winning lotto numbers. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't make her job easier. That would just make her leave her job. Well, yeah, really. <laughs> and Entirely. Mr. Watson. Uh, have we heard any more, uh, and now that Mrs. Kutsky is here tonight, have we heard anything with the uh, conference in May? Because I looked on the website and it's still not... Listed. So moving forward, they've been working on their brochure. Yep, they, we've got the cover of the brochure shows the holly clock with the brick building it's the picture is shot from the west side of the clock so it shows the building across the street uh the inside of the cover is actually going to be a picture of my house i didn't submit it uh, sure, Josh. ron campbell did it's kind of interesting <laughs> it's really more 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 leaves and trees it's shot from maple street in front of the addis house so it's at an angle cutting across so it's and it's done in the fall so the yellow leaves are there the only reason i know that that's what it is is they had to get our permission to use it because nice. it's our house sure and it makes max uh, a celebrity because he's oh, sitting he's in the yard looking at the camera guy <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah they're in the process of putting the brochure together 
And um, have we heard of admittance fees, uh, costs, anything like that? Registration yet? fees are typically in the three hundred dollar range. I think for people that attend the conference, for the I haven't seen any of that. I know that they just work. They've been working out all the breakout sessions and the timing and where. Just in terms of like that nuts and bolts of the conference and putting that all together. Okay. They've got a great gal who's like very detailed in charge. Do you oh, yeah. have uh, any anticipation when you would see that for release? I think the goal is to have that done um, mid February. So they're only leaving three months for people to register and commit. Yes. Or two months. Okay. Yeah. They, but they're very, you know, when she sends you an email to ask you questions, she, I need the answer in two days. I, so and if you don't get it to, she's on the phone. Yeah. It's Janet Krieger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, we were having a meeting, if I can tell a story, we were having a meeting, the committee meeting, and working on this stuff, and the question came up about what the capacity was at oh. the venue. And while we were in the meeting, I just sat back and called Kari, and I said, what's the capacity? And she said, and I said, I just talked to Kari, Janet went, how do you get her on the phone so fast? <laughs> and my number, not the office number. I said, <laughs> I said well, it's because I have her number because she's right across the street. <laughs> That's funny. So, but Janet was like, somebody else got somebody before I could? <laughs> I was like, okay. So, yeah, but they're, they're on top of this. Perfect. I have nothing right. further. Thank you. Okay. Um, then we can look at adjourning the meeting at 741.